Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a healthy recipe video and what I ate this week with my last grocery haul. I have lots of really yummy recipes here to cater to gluten-free, low-carb, and Weight Watchers Blue, so just stay tuned for all the yummy recipes today. So starting out with our first recipe today, I am doing a jalapeno popper chicken soup, and you can do this to be keto friendly, you can do this to be Weight Watchers friendly. I'll just tell you a couple things you need to swap out. So I start by making a roux. I did one green pepper, one onion, I did a half a cup of gluten-free flour. Now you can use almond flour or coconut flour. I would prefer to use maybe a mixture of both if I were doing keto. I just use the Pillsbury gluten-free flour for this, and then I slowly add in chicken broth and that will make a really nice base to the soup and it is so yummy and then I go in and I add half and half um, this would be both keto friendly and Weight Watchers friendly I maybe would even do like a lighter milk or a dairy free milk without the taste I am trying to be a little bit more dairy free I just haven't found a good dairy free alternative to add to my soups versus dairy milk and cream cheese, etc. Um, but here I'm just adding in a block of fat-free cream cheese. You can use full fat cream cheese as well. Um, and then I also added bacon bits and jalapenos in here and that's it. It's such an easy recipe, you guys, but it is so good. It really hits the spot when you're looking for a warm, like comfort food meal. And this was just a total of two points for me per bowl with the fat-free cream cheese and bacon bits in there. Next recipe I'm sharing with you guys is just a simple scrambled egg recipe. I just wanted to show you guys what I eat for my breakfasts and typically I'll have either this or fried eggs and pico. So my scrambled eggs, I add just a little bit of water to them, it fluffs them right up and it cuts out the dairy and then I just let them sit. Even though this is sped up quite a bit, I do let them sit there and fluff up. I don't mix them too much and then I just add shredded cheese and I'm using some diced like fried potatoes from the night before, having a really big breakfast because it was right around 11 a.m. by the time I was making this. So a good brunch and this will last me all day. Um, I do cottage cheese, some salsa and like I said then those potatoes underneath gave the kids some watermelon and it's just a staple like recipe in our house like breakfast recipe in our house and this for me was a total of four points for breakfast this morning next recipe I'm sharing with you guys is one of my favorites and it is cauliflower crust pizza and we get these like life on the veg cauliflower power I think is how it's pronounced um, pizza crust and we get a two pack for six dollars from Walmart and then I am putting pizza sauce on both of them and turkey pepperoni on one turkey pepperoni honestly is like way better than regular pepperoni it's not as greasy it doesn't make my stomach as upset it's just way better in my opinion um, so we're doing pepperoni pizza for the one for the kids and then we are going to do we call it a family special the Taylor family special which is my side of the family which is mushrooms uh, ground sausage and green olives so for the sausage I used actually it was a breakfast sausage a turkey breakfast sausage and I did just about a half a pound on this pizza and then I added some diced green olives and diced mushrooms. We just get the canned mushrooms, but the fresh ones are even better. Um, and then I just top both of the pizzas off, off with provolone. And we cooked these on our grill, on our pellet grill, our smoker grill. And it was so good, you guys. The end result of these pizzas, just wait, is just phenomenal. I highly recommend that you guys try this. And these are about two to three points Per pizza so the uh, mushroom green olive and sausage one is three points per slice versus five or six for a regular piece of pizza and the pepperoni one was just two points per slice versus again five to six points per slice these are gluten-free like I said they're cauliflower pizza crusts um, as far as like being dairy free I'm not entirely sure what you would replace the provolone with maybe like a dairy-free cheese. I know Daya, Daya, they have a really good 
line of dairy-free cheese, but this is the end result. It is so good. The toppings were piled high and thick and it was the best pizza ever. Sharing one of my snacks with you next. This is one of my staples in the house as well. I get the light laughing cow cheese and I eat it with the reduced fat wheat thins. I also like to have these crackers with the light baby bell cheeses, but this is only one point per wedge. And then I believe like a handful of these, so like 10 to 13 are three points for the wheat thins and they're so good. It's one of my favorite snacks to have. Next recipe is a chicken tortilla soup or a chicken taco soup. It just has a really good like taco seasoning base to it and I will switch out the proteins a lot in this soup. But today I am doing four chicken tenderloins. Sometimes I'll do two chicken breasts or just recently I made it with chicken cheddar jalapeno sausage and it was so good. Um, I also for the base, I will do one whole yellow onion. I cook all of my veggies first and I make sure that they are thoroughly cooked before I add the rest of the ingredients. So here I'm just adding that onion to the chicken as it's cooking to um, cook through the onion but also give the chicken some really good flavor. And then I am chopping up some zucchini. I've got two zucchini here um, that I chopped up. It's one of my favorite like potato replacements. It kind of gives you the same texture as a potato. Um, I did two whole green peppers in here and sometimes I'll add fresh jalapenos or I'll do like mini like colored peppers. They're so good. Um, and then I will just cook everything up with a little bit of avocado oil in my Dutch oven. It's so yummy. Make sure that those veggies are cooked all the way through or are to the crispness or crunchness that you like before you add the rest of the ingredients because then it will be ready to eat sooner. Uh, you don't have to wait for those veggies to cook down. So now I'm just adding the onion and I'm going to cut up that chicken and add it to the pot and some of the canned items I will use, I'll show you in a minute here. Um, the seasonings are chili powder, garlic powder, paprika, um, I use a better than bouillon chicken base in here. I'll always do a little paprika and cumin as well because they're just really good, like taste, like just like a good like enchilada or taco or um, tortilla soup type of base. It's so perfect. Cumin is like one of my favorite seasonings, but you need to be careful with it because it can get pretty pungent pretty fast. So here I'm adding that cumin in, and I will add about eight cups of water to the Dutch oven after I'm done adding the chicken. Finishing off this soup with the canned items, I did a whole can of petite diced tomatoes. Um, this time around I just recently made this soup again and I only did a half can and it was a little bit better because it wasn't as sweet. I also added a can of corn which I would recommend rinsing the corn and then I added in a can of kidney beans to this as well. Now I did not add the kidney beans this time when I made it and I feel like it was a little bit better. Uh, beans do tend to bloat you and they are inflammatory. So if you're trying to do anti-inflammatory, I would recommend that you go without the beans. But anyways, and then I will add in the shredded cheese on top when it's all done. If you guys like a creamier version of this, I highly recommend you try adding a block of fat-free cream cheese or adding a tablespoon of fat-free sour cream to every bowl. That's how I like to eat it, and it doesn't add any points onto the soup. This soup, all in all, is about two points per bowl. And this time around when I made it, I made it with like chicken, jalapeno popper, sausage, things. They were so good. Anyways, that was about four points 
and I took out the beans so that it wasn't as inflammatory, but it was so good. Next recipe I'm sharing with you is a Parmesan crusted salmon and I just did a really quick like once over of the ingredients I used and I know it's blurry here but it was the magic salmon seasoning and garlic powder and then I do some shredded Parmesan on top and it is so yummy. I also like to do a honey sriracha salmon which I will include next time. Another breakfast idea for you guys, like I said, I will either have scrambled eggs or I'll have fried eggs with pico. So I'm showing you how I make my pico. It's very straightforward, it's so easy, but I just dice up a half of a red onion and then I will dice up three to four Roma tomatoes, depending on how big they are. Here I am, I'm frying up my eggs. Um, and then I also add some cilantro with lime juice. It's super quick, super simple, but it's so good and fresh on eggs or if you like to have tortilla chips, etc. It's just a really yummy, like fresh ingredient to keep in the house. I also made a chia pudding this particular morning and I did a half a cup of oat milk and two tablespoons of chia seeds. Next recipe I'm sharing with you guys is another encrusted fish recipe, one of my favorites. We go to this one all the time. My sister-in-law showed me the recipe for this and I've been obsessed. So what it is is you do about a half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese and then to your liking, paprika, garlic powder, salt, pepper and onion powder and you mix it all up. I like to go a little heavier on the paprika. Now I did four very, or five very large fillets here. Um, and then I do about a tablespoon on top. I got way too much oil on these, you guys. I had a super heavy hand this day. But about one tablespoon of avocado oil is what you want to do. Um, and then I will encrust it, where like pat it with that like crust that you wanna get on top. Now I make sure that they are like spread evenly throughout this and I make sure that they don't have like too much or too little of one ingredient over the other. These tend to stick better if you have a little bit more oil on the tilapia or on the fish. You can also do this with salmon or pork even, but the seasoning like that crust tends to stick better if you have um, about a tablespoon of oil on the meat. So anyways, and then I just take the rest of the mixture after I'm done um, encrusting the tilapia. I'll take the rest of the mixture and just kind of sprinkle it across the rest of the fillets and use it up all the rest of that goodness in the bowl. Next thing that I do is I will slice up some fresh lemon, squeeze the lemon juice on top of the fillets, and then I will leave the lemon wedges on there. We cook our tilapia in our pellet grill, so it's like our smoker, and then just add some extra flavor. It's so good. I highly recommend that you guys get a pellet grill if you don't have one because it makes everything taste so much better. Um, and here I'm just making my spicy green beans. I use a little bit of sweet chili sauce, I use some sriracha, I use everything but the bagel seasoning, and then a little bit of garlic. Um, and then I topped it off with soy sauce as well, I forgot about that, because I wanted to balance out the sweetness of the sweet chili and the spice of the sriracha, because sriracha to me is like a little bit of a, like a sweet spicy. Um, so I like to just balance it out with a little bit of soy sauce, but these are so good. They're very spicy, you guys, but they're so good. Um, and then I'm doing some twice baked potatoes. Now this meal was a little bit higher in points because of the Parmesan on the tilapia and some of the sauces inside of the green beans and the cheese and the potatoes. So total this meal was about eight points, nine points depending on 
what you use for your toppings and how much cheese you use, but I would say eight to 10 points would be a really good guesstimate for this meal on Weight Watchers Blue. If you wanted to make this low carb, you could do twice baked cauliflower mashed potatoes, which we have done mashed cauliflower a ton in the past and it is so good. It really does level up with the actual mashed potatoes. So again, if you're keto or low carb, you can definitely try that out um, and cut the sweet chili sauce from the green beans to make it a little bit more low carb friendly because that sweet chili sauce does have a little bit of sugar in it. But here I'm just filling up the potato skins with the mashed potatoes. Um, if you guys don't know what twice baked potatoes are, you mash the potatoes, you put the potatoes back into the potato skins, and then you top it with cheese and bacon bits. I only had shredded cheese this day, so I just put cheese on top, but you can really doctor it up however you want. You could do chives, etc. but these are some of our favorites in the house, and if I just need a good, like, comforting carb, mashed potatoes always do the trick. Another quick and easy weeknight dinner meal idea for you guys are chicken thighs topped with Montreal chicken seasoning and paprika. I love to put this on the pellet grill or put it in the oven. It's so good. It crisps up so nice. I serve this with fresh corn on the cob because what's more summery than fresh corn on the cob? It's so good. And then I also served it up with a side salad. Now this was a total of like 10 to 12 points for me on Weight Watchers Blue because I added some rice, but it was well worth it. Just showing you guys what I have for lunch on my typical days. I have salads quite a bit. Um, this is just a chopped veggie salad with cilantro, ranch, shredded cheese, and this was a total of six points for me for this lunch. All right, so this last recipe that I'm sharing with you guys is probably my favorite. This is a little bit heavier in points because I am using steak as part of this meal and fried potatoes. So. It is a little bit higher in points, but it is so good. And if I haven't had very many points during the day, this is well worth it. So here I am making the glaze for the steak tips. Um, I do a little bit of balsamic glaze, which I got from Costco, A1, Worcestershire avocado oil, a splash of soy sauce, and some nature seasons. And then I will stir all that up with a whisk until it is nice and bubbly. And then at the very end, I will add some crushed rosemary leaves. This just gives it, it really rounds out the flavor. It is so yummy. I do a very similar glaze for pork chops and chicken. This one with the A1 and Worcestershire and soy sauce just kind of makes it, it gives it a little bit more of like a rounded, like salty taste. But back to my shrimp, I like to cook my shrimp from raw with shrimp seasoning, magic shrimp seasoning and a little bit of Old Bay and butter. And then I just let that thicken and let it sit for a while. Now you wanna cook your shrimp from raw because otherwise they will overcook and get too rubbery. So going to my steak now, I just have some sirloins here and I'm just cubing them up. This isn't like a typical like steak tips type of thing, but I like to just cube up the steak and then pour the glaze on top and then I serve it with a side of the shrimp and a side of the diced potatoes and it's just such a yummy like whole like rounded out meal everybody in my family absolutely loves this recipe they love this meal the kids will devour the steak <laughs> and this meal was a total of about 12 to 13 points it really depends on how heavy you are with your sauce how many potatoes you do but I was right around that 12 to 13 point mark all right guys that is going to wrap it up for today's video I hope you enjoyed this recipe video here on my channel if you did please leave it a big thumbs up and comment with your favorite recipe down below and I will see you guys tomorrow for a fall shop with me okay bye you guys